In today's video, we're diving into the 2018 release Kingdom Come Deliverance. This game is an action RPG with a strong emphasis on historically accurate content. So don't expect any dragons or wizards. By the end of this video, hopefully we'll be able to answer Kingdom Come Deliverance. Should I buy it? Story. Developed by Warhorse Studios, the game takes place in 15th century Bohemia, which is known today as the Czech Republic. And there is an ongoing war raging on between King Wenceslas and the Hungarian King Sigismund. The story revolves around Henry, the son of a blacksmith from the small mining town of Skalitz. After an early instance, the game sets Henry on his own path of redemption. He becomes embroiled within the war and learns much more about himself. The story holds some very loose similarities to the story of Skyrim, in the essence that you control a nobody to begin with who grows and develops into an important figure that plays a pivotal role within the world. In fact, that's virtually every single RPG game. Please note I will be doing a full spoiler filled recap of the story very soon on this channel. If you haven't seen my story recaps before then you can check out my Witcher 3 one by clicking up here. On the whole, the plot was an emotional roller coaster with shocking twists and turns. This is one of the few games I've played recently where I really had no idea where the story was going to take me next. 9. Setting Now I'm a sucker for a medieval game. There's something about the era which is just so captivating and Kingdom Come Deliverance personifies the era beautifully. Although it doesn't possess the budgets and graphic engines that some games do, the world is alive and immersive. Each town, village and city boasts their own uniqueness and trudging through the forestry areas, you really don't know what you're going to stumble across. Now I've been to modern day Czech Republic and in fact I was supposed to be on holiday there right now but naturally due to coronavirus that has been cancelled. However being immersed and lost in the world of Bohemia was almost just as good. Just don't tell my girlfriend that. If you do pick this game up just enjoy the world. I really did. The soundtrack, the busy buzz of the in-game cities and the quaint quirky small villages and huts make this a near perfect RPG world. 9. Characters RPGs with bad characters is like fish with soggy chips. They are integral, especially within a large and expansive game. If you spend a lot of time with these characters, it's vitally important that they perform. And my god, they do. Our main man is of course Henry, whose dry wit provided hours of laughs. He's a fairly complex dude with a deep and emotional backstory, part of which you experience yourself within the prologue of the game. Simply, he has felt trauma and his life has been tough, which makes his journey much more complex. The voice acting by Tom McKay is absolutely excellent and fits the commoner feel of Henry. No disrespect, Tom. His voice and etiquette stand out like a sore thumb among nobles, particularly early on in the game. There are simply too many supporting characters to mention all of them because of the story really is so colossal. But the antagonists in the game provide genuine hate and a sense of satisfaction when you overcome them. And your friends and relationships in the game have lots of depth and substance. Teresa is a love interest of Henry and her backstory is perhaps even deeper than Henry's and is told through a harrowing DLC. Just the one criticism in this category and this may be due to Warhorse being a small developer but the cast isn't huge so some actors voice many characters within the world. That's nothing new, we see that most of the time in RPG games. However, the one guy who voices our friend Fritz has a very recognisable voice. It's brilliant, but you can tell when it's the same dude. So when you're roaming the world and the same voice is cropping up, it kind of breaks the immersion ever so slightly. Either that or Fritz just has many jobs on the go in this world. The characters score a 9. Gameplay. Sword fighting is always tough in video games. Some games have perfected it, whilst others can kind of leave you feeling fairly unsatisfied. Perhaps again, relating to the fact that Kingdom Come Deliverance prides itself on historical accuracy, this game showcases the most real and complex type of sword fighting that I have ever experienced in a game. There's separate controls for stabbing, slashing, dodging and blocking and you can also learn devastating combos as well. In the early hours of the game you'll be banging your head against the wall because it's so fucking hard. In the prologue you have to escape from a certain area and me being me decided to take my chances with one of the enemies and it basically he kind of chopped me up like a potato. However once you learn swordplay it becomes so addictive. My only criticism is that there's not actually that much of it. 
Besides skirmishes and battles which feature in the main story, a lot of disputes can be settled peacefully via the conversation choices. This led to me occasionally saving the game and just going on a mad killing spree at a nearby tavern. Seriously, I, I just loved it. Maybe I need some help. Everything from lockpicking to pickpocketing to hunting, the gameplay is really, really hard and it really teaches and rewards you for learning your craft. You can learn your craft via paying people to train you or just practicing. Sometimes in this game, you'll find yourself playing for hours without actually doing a single quest. Improving yourself and your skills becomes ridiculously addictive and can help with the story too. For example, in the beginning of the game, Henry cannot read, but you can actually visit a man who teaches you how to read via a little type of minigame. By now being literate, we can conclude quests in different ways than before. Horse riding, much like fighting, is so, so real. You can't ride sideways up a mountain on this game like most rival titles. And again, practicing and learning it becomes much, much easier and rewarding in the process. I really could talk about the gameplay in this game for absolutely hours. It's just perfect old school RPG. 10. Visuals. Okay, so now we, we take a bit of a downturn, but don't worry, let's firstly remember that this is a small game from a small developer. And if you hadn't realized already, they have done an incredible job with this game. Visually, it has some issues, mainly due to some visual bugs, but I'll get into that in the next category. But the positives, the actual world is designed beautifully. Some of the structures are really well thought up and the interiors are all unique, unlike the likes of Greedfall, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. There's a huge monastery in the game, which at first you can't get inside until a later mission where you actually go undercover as a monk, which is awesome, by the way. The interior was incredible and you can sense the time that the developers really put into it. Graphically, it's, it's very average. So many games now have that kind of movie feel to them. Think of Horizon Zero Dawn and virtually any game powered by the DICE engine. This game doesn't have that, but it depends on what you're like as a player. Personally, I put story, gameplay and immersion above visuals, so the lack of a super HD blockbuster cutscene didn't really detract from the fun that I had. But I do only mark this category a six. Bugs. If I could skip this category, I really would, because I wanted this game to score so, so well. But I have to keep it real and honest, and if you're a player who gets frustrated by bugs, this game could be an issue. There are several visual bugs in the game. Some are minor, such as armor, randomly changing color, and frame rate drops. Others are a little bit more complex. The worst one being that the world builds around you. So if you're galloping through a city to your next quest point, you'll see characters and buildings kind of being constructed. As much as 15th century Bohemia was immersive and historically accurate, seeing a lone pair of feet walking out of the tavern is, is a little bit strange, even after a few ales. The bug does fix itself quick enough, but sometimes when you launch a conversation, the bug continues and you can see the person who you are talking to build and texturize throughout the conversation. On the other hand, this may not be a bug at all, but instead there was a weird, strange skin disease infesting the world in 15th century Bohemia. I think it's more likely the first. The positive news is that these are bugs that can be overlooked. They don't affect the story, cause your game to crash, or make it impossible to progress. It just, well, it just bugs you. Saving themselves a few marks because this, of course, is a small developer, I give this category a five. Length. Okay, brace yourself. This game is approximately 70 hours long. There are contrasting reports online. Some claim the game is just 50, and that may be true for the main story, but simply this is a game where it is impossible to just play the main story. With treasure hunts, side quests, and more, you'll no doubt be putting at least 70 into this game. Warhorse have stated that there is 60 hours of dialogue and three and a half hours of cutscenes. So it's a long game, but truly, length doesn't always matter. At least that's what I've been told. What does matter is whether the game justifies the length. A two hour game can be absolutely perfect as long as it fits the story. For me, never once did I feel bored playing this game. Every quest is unique and engaging and the gameplay is just so fresh that hours really can fly by. Admittedly, it's not a few sittings kind of game. It probably took me around a month to play, just coming back to it and playing a few hours here and there. With the story being so good, it means this game absolutely justifies the 70 hours. It doesn't feel long. 
Although my girlfriend did comment several times that I play that sword game quite a lot, but I just swore at her in check. You pick up some really cool things in this game. 9. Replayability. A word that I think I may have just invented. Basically, would I play the game again? I would, but not immediately. I think because this game is so large and so deep, it's sort of one where you put it back on the shelf and maybe pick it up in a year's time. However, when you do play it again, it would definitely be fun. Because of the length, you'll likely have forgotten the earlier sequences of the game and every quest can be settled in different ways. For example, on my second play, I might bribe a guard instead of fighting him like I did in the first one, or I may politely decline this lady's offer for sex the second time around. No, actually, thinking about it, I, I, I probably wouldn't do that. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. Good luck, then. <laughs> Overall, eight. Fun. I don't think I need to add too much to this category. For reasons I've laid out already, yes, this game is hella fun. Gameplay, story and setting all work beautifully together to make a right medieval laugh. One suggestion of improvement would be to add maybe a crafting element so we can make our own armour and weapons opposed to buying or collecting them. We are the son of a blacksmith, after all. 9. Value so I grabbed this game on offer at a crazy £12, which is around $15, and that edition included all of the DLCs. So yes, it was value. In fact, I kind of feel like I need to apologise to Warhorse for stealing from them. Right now, as I speak, the Royal Edition with all the DLCs is currently selling for £23 on Amazon in the UK and $34 in the US. I think this game is absolutely worth that money. If not for the amazing story, but simply for how much you get out of it. 70 hour games are a rarity these days, and for that price, it's fantastic. I would even say, even if the game climbs back up to £40 or $50, it would still hold its value. 10. So, here's our scores. In truth, the scores aren't really that important, and the decision of buying it is down to you from what you've heard from me in this video. But for me personally, I loved this game, like so, so much. If anyone from Warhorse Studios is watching this review, I just want to thank you for the time you put into this one. It was absolutely brilliant and absolutely worth it. Although if we don't get another release soon, I will seek vengeance. Thank you very much for watching this review. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you'd like more reviews very soon. And in the meantime, here's a video I think you might also like to watch.